All right, guys, so we are out here in Athens again this weekend at our favorite boondocking spot. We're going to give a quick overview of our generator. We have the Westinghouse iGen 4500 inverter generator. So last year we boondocked a lot and we didn't do a good job managing our batteries and we ended up damaging the cell in our lead acid batteries because we were draining them dead just way too often uh, and that's our fault for not keeping an eye on the uh, on the charge so this year i put two new lead acid batteries into the trailer and we've been down here boondocking for the weekend going to give you guys a quick overview of this generator how everything works if it's something that you're looking for and kind of explain to you and show you what kind of draw you get uh, by running your trailer off of the generator. I got some decibel levels with it running, some decibel levels with it off, so you kind of have an idea of what kind of noise you'll be dealing with. But stick around till the end and we'll show you what all this bad boy will power at once. All right, guys, so just dig into the face of this thing. Um, it works pretty much like any other generator does. They're all pretty self-explanatory, but you know, just for uh, Westinghouse iGen 4500 inverter generator, kind of give you a rundown of the faceplate of this thing so you know what everything does. So start off with your power button. This is your main power button off and on. Um, it's all waterproof. You just flip it, the red light will stay on once it's on. You're on an off switch. It does have an electric start, so you don't have to pull start this thing, but if your battery goes dead, um, there is a pull start on it as a backup. Your eco mode, uh, when you start it, you wanna turn the eco mode off, let it warm up a little bit, and then you can go into eco mode, and I'll show you the different uh, decibel levels for that when it's on. This is the charging port for the battery for the electric start. Um, when it's running every once in a while, I'll just plug this thing in and plug it into one of the 120s and essentially let it charge itself. Your fuel shut off, um, just like any other, it's, it's a built-in pitcock in there. Turn your gas on or off. Um, when you're storing it, turn it off, let it run out of gas so the bowl empties out. You have one 30 amp set up already for your RV. Um, so if you have a 50 amp plug like we do, you will have to use your reducer to go from 30 up to your 50 amp plug. So, but that works out really well. You have your two 20 amp, you know, just your regular 110 plugs that it'll run. This is your main breaker for uh, if you go into overload and bust your main breaker. There's individual breakers for your 30 amp and a breaker for the 20 amps. Um, if you want to try to run them in parallel, two different uh, generators at the same time, you can plug those in here and get uh, two of them going at the same time. All your oil lights, your running lights, everything in here. You have a couple of two amp USB ports here that you can plug in and charge stuff off of. Reset button, and this is all of your gauges here. So this will show you your fuel levels. It'll show you the percentage of output that you've got going on. Um, an average run time, um, how much time you have left on the tank of fuel that's in it. And uh, it does have a three and a half gallon gas tank, but uh, under a light load, you can get between 12 and 14 hours of run time out of this thing on a light load. So it's, it's fairly fuel efficient. So that's essentially the basics of the faceplate of this thing. We'll go through the startup process um, I'll show you the three different ways to start this thing and uh, then we'll get into some sound levels with it plugged into the trailer running some different things. Okay, so there are three different ways to start the motor on this thing. Um, all three steps begin the same. You have to turn on the main power switch. So when that's lit up red, you know that the main switch is on. Um, this model does come with a super handy little remote control. Just got an on and an off button. That's all there is to it. So for the first way to start it, if you're outside with your trailer, you've got it turned on here. All you have to do is push the on off button and hold it for about a second and it fires right up. And this is it running on with the eco mode turned off. There's the eco mode turned on. 
So it's a pretty quiet unit. Uh, it's showing that we have a full tank of gas. We got about 21 hours with no load on it right now that's available in this tank. And we're pulling 0% of the draw from it. So there's nothing hooked up to it right now. So when you want to turn it off, you can either kill the main power switch or just hit the on off button again. And it turns it right off. What we usually do is we will leave this switch on when we're boondocking. The battery lasts a really long time. And leave the remote control inside the trailer with us. So when we get up in the morning, we need to charge the batteries or make a pot of coffee or whatever. You just go to the on button, push it. And again, it fires right up, no issues. And I am wearing a microphone, so it's picking up. I'm not sure how the audio is gonna pick up on with this thing running, but it's, it's crazy quiet. How quiet this thing is, especially with a sitting this close to it. And then to turn it off, you can do the same thing hit the off button on the remote control and it shuts it off once your uh once your coffee's done so the third way there is a pull string over here on the other side and it's super easy to pull this thing too it's uh it's a pretty good setup so essentially all you have to do is put your hand on it grab the string just like your lawnmower and give it a little tug and she fires right up so super easy startup everything that you need is here you can keep an eye on everything super simple to use all right so now i'm going to plug this thing into the trailer and uh, i'll have shelly be my lovely assistant inside uh, we will start with just running the air conditioner by itself uh, and see what kind of draw it pulls off of it we will uh, turn the air conditioner off, turn on the microwave and see what kind of draw we get of it. And those are two big draw items. And then for a third test, we will turn on the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time and see if we can max this bad boy out. Now, granted right now, my batteries are down to two thirds. So when we plug in, it will start charging the batteries right away. So that's gonna draw a little bit of power from it, but uh, I don't think we're gonna have an issue. But stick around and see what, uh, see what this bad boy will do. All right, guys, so we got the trailer hooked up. We got a reducer in here to bring it from 50 to 30. From the reducer pigtail, I also have it plugged into our Progressive Industries uh, surge protector. With this being an inverter generator, you don't need that surge protector, but I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I use mine. It's, uh, you know, it's one more link in the chain to keep stuff from getting burned up if anything bad does happen. So let's fire this thing up. I've got my lovely assistant ready to go inside. Like I said, we'll start with just the air conditioner and then we'll go to just the microwave and then we'll do the air conditioner and microwave together. So let's fire it up and get started. Okay, so we've got it running. We are charging the batteries right now and it says it's drawing at 25% right now of the maximum output of this thing. Um, and that's just charging the two lead acid batteries plus you know the refrigerator and everything else has got that residual draw off your 12 volt system so let's fire up the air conditioner and see where it goes from there okay so now the uh, blower just turned on too so now it is showing that we are up to 50 percent draw running the air conditioner and everything going right now at the same time so still only 50 percent not too bad so now we'll turn the air conditioner off and do just the microwave back down to 25%, so we're doing good there. And now we'll just turn on the microwave by itself. All right, there she revved up from the microwave. So that took us back up to a 50% draw, running the batteries, the residual draw from everything and the microwave by itself. So let's turn the microwave off. Now we'll turn on the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time and see if we can get this bad boy to red line. All right, so there's the air conditioner kicked on. There's the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time. And we're only at 75% draw running both of them at the same time. So we've still got a little bit of juice left over. Uh, if we need to pull more. So we're 
back down to the 25% again. So, like I said, it's a super quiet unit. It will uh, it'll run your microwave and air conditioners at the same time. Now, we only do have one, uh, one air conditioner. We don't have two, so if you do have a dual air conditioner unit, that will make a big difference. So there you go. If you're looking for a generator, I strongly recommend this Westinghouse iGen 4500 inverter generator. It will run everything in our trailer at the same time, and it's super quiet. We'll put a link in the description box down below for our Amazon so you can see where to pick one up and kind of check on the prices. They are a little spendy and they do now make a dual fuel version of this where you can run it on propane or gasoline. I have heard that the propane version does burn through propane really fast. We are going to do a better job keeping an eye on our batteries, um, not let them get drained down to zero because we are still running lead acid and through the weekend down here it's Sunday now but throughout the weekend we have turned it on about five or six times excluding in the mornings um, to run the coffee pot but just to keep our batteries topped off uh, just to make sure we don't do damage to those so strongly recommend this unit if it's something that you guys are looking for this generator is a beast it will handle just about anything that you throw at it so and it's super quiet the downside of this thing is it's 98 pounds, I think, with the gas and oil, all the fluids in it. So it is a little bit heavy. Um, moving around can be a bear. But uh, for the most part, it's well worth the money. It's well worth the peace of mind if you are boondocking a lot to have this beast with you and, and it'll take care of you. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments and I'll get you answers the best I can. We've owned this unit for three years now. I've beat it up. It's been in the back of the truck. It's been all over the country. It is a pretty tough bird. So if you're worried about something, you know, getting busted on it, I mean, if you're not beating it with a sledgehammer, it'll take just about any abuse that you can throw at it. So strongly recommend it. I'll give you guys a 360 tour of it here. Um, pretty good unit. So thumbs up, strongly recommend it. So yeah, like I've been showing you guys the face of it, we'll walk around here to the pull string side. She is a beast. It does come with a little funnel to put the oil in. Keep a hold of that funnel because the oil plug is buried back in here. And getting to that with a quart of oil is quite a pain without the special little uh, funnel that they send with it. And if you look at the inside of this thing, it has got this foam, the, the sound deafening foam built throughout this thing. So it's super quiet all the way around. On the back side, you have the one door that's where your battery lives, easy access. I keep my, um, my cord for the charging port right in here, stays out of the way. I don't have to worry about losing it so I can keep my hands on it. I do keep a cable lock on it for when we're out and about, just keep it locked to the side of the trailer. She's got some scuffs, she's been beat up, she's been around, but she is beast. 